Hello everybody, it's lovely to be back with you again today. So today I thought it might be quite nice to go through buttons with you. Um, there's nothing worse than losing a button and today I'm going to show you how you can stitch that back on yourself. I'm also going to go through some alternative options for you as well. Um, just to jazz your clothes up a little bit if you want to or if you lose a button and can't find it then I'm going to show you how alternative buttons can look really nice on your garment and also give it almost a facelift really. So as always I'm going to go through my equipment. The first one I've got we won't be using today but I just love it. So I had to show it to you. It's wood, which again, I really love because it's not plastic. Um, and it's a real focal button. Um, and I'll, I'll show you it on the cardigan we've got in a moment. Um, but I won't be stitching that on today. But uh, the process of stitching this on will be exactly the same as stitching this one on. It's still a four hole button, um, so the process is no different. The next one I have is a little toggle. Now I will be putting this one on today for you because it is slightly different. It's not a four hole, it's not a two hole. Um, you'll see that there's a tiny little groove there. Now what will happen when we stitch that on, we will stitch it on that way and the cotton will just sit in that groove and just be like that on your cardigan. So it's really quite a, a different look. Um, and then we have... I have to say, probably my favourite, which is the pussycat button, and it is two hole, so that will be one of the standard type buttons that you would put on. Although it, you know, it does look very different and placed on the cardigan again. I think probably you would only use one, just to give it that um, pop factor. So. We'll call him Henry, so I'll put Henry there for a moment. I then have a leather one, which again, I absolutely love. Again, because it's not plastic um, and it's really nice. Um, now we call this one a shank button. So slightly different process of stitching it on, but obviously we'll go through that. Um, and then I have another couple of shank buttons and they're just different styles really to show what you can use on a cardigan. So you, you could really put a whole set of these two. Sorry, just turn it so you can see. Or not, you know, you could use it as just one focal button. So then we come to a set I have here. Now these are really pretty um, and they're wood, again, two whole. So again, you could put a whole set, maybe two, maybe every other one. You know, the choice is very much yours um, and what you like in this tutorial. And then this one, which is quite a focal one, um, and I put this in the mix just to show you, you know, that again, I would probably only use one and possibly put it in the middle of the cardigan. So then we're gonna come on to our threads. Now, a really good tip when um, you're stitching with thread. Now, generally it's, it's pretty good to use a thicker thread than you normally would when you would be sewing. So here I have standard thread, but I, it's, I'm gonna try and show you. 
what I've actually done is threaded it so that I have four strands going through the eye of the needle and you'll see I'm using a really big needle. No, it's not cheating. I hear you all cry you're cheating. I'm not. Um, but there we have four strands going through the needle. Now, not only does that cut your time down incredibly, because if you think about it, you're sewing four times at once, um, but it also makes that cotton much, much stronger. Here I've got, um, you've heard me talk of top thread before, haven't you, when we've done some of our other tutorials. So this one I decided um, to show you the top thread. Again, that's threaded double through the needle. So in a minute, I'll show you how to do that. It sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. And that gives you four threads instead of two. And then I suddenly thought about this idea, which again, you know, we're using focal buttons. Why not use focal thread? So this is embroidery thread, but it's variegated. Um, and that's, there's the end of the needle. So if I take it along for you, that will show you it goes in varying degrees of blue right through to cream. So that, you know, that will show as you're sewing your button on, you'll have um, different colours coming through. And this is a skein that I haven't um, opened, but it's just really to show you. Um, now that is nice and thick, so you would only need to use that double. You wouldn't need to have four skeins of that coming through. So now I've gone through um, the equipment. I have here one that I didn't prepare earlier purposely to show you how to do the four thread option. So you'll probably lose my hand a minute, but I'm just going to pull off. And remember, you'll need double the amount you would normally use because obviously you know, it's going to be um, double through the needle. So get the two ends of your cotton and put them together like so. So there we have our two ends, as you can see. Now, normally we would thread one end, pull it through and tie a knot so that it's double. But today, what I'm going to show you is putting two pieces through the needle. Like so. There we go. OK, so that's gone through. And then we'll pull it right through. And the loop, I just looped around my baby finger. But then you'll get your ends even, like so. Do your knot. And there you have your four threads through your needle. And as you can see, I pulled off an awful lot of cotton. But because we're, we're doing it four times, it does make it quite short. So you will need to pull off quite a bit for that. So that just explains a little bit about the equipment that we use. So I'm just going to clear a little space here and then I'm going to introduce you to our beautiful car oh it's stunning this cardigan now this has been given to us by on loan to show you the button process um lovely lovely company do look it up that's online and you'll find it online basically and they are a rental clothing rental company 
and they have some of the most beautiful clothes I've seen. So this cardigan that they've loaned us is Alexa Chung and oh gosh, it, it's so soft, so pretty. And of course a cardigan like this gives you a lot of opportunity to, you know, just add your own little signature to it. So as you can see up here, we've lost a button, which luckily was kept. So that is the button there. But for this purpose, I'm going to show you the effects of some different buttons. So before we start the sewing, I actually want to just show you um, what can happen and how we can lose these buttons and why really because it just gives you a good insight now here you will see and I know you will have all suffered with this we have a button just hanging off here and then you have this piece of thread and I don't know if I can show you completely but you see this piece of thread and you can't help but pull it and as you pull it it completely unravels and voila, the button falls off. Now, the reason this happens is because all buttons, when the garment is new, are basically put on put on by machine, unless you know they're handmade or a bespoke garment from a seamstress, something like that. So when you get one of those little threads hanging, basically what's happened is the machine hasn't quite finished off when it's been stitching the button. And I don't know about you, but when I see that, I know exactly what's going to happen, but I can't help but pull it. If I cut it, I know it's there, so I'm fiddling with it. So the best thing is just to get rid of it and start again. Now, when we're sewing the buttons on, we obviously, of course, finish it off properly, um, which doesn't allow that to happen. So just a little insight into what, what happens and why. So now, oh, look at that. We have two buttons to replace. So I'm going to use Henry first because I think he makes a nice top button. So he will go there. You can just see where the top button fell off and you can feel it. And if not, do your garment up and by the button from below that is still there and then just line up and what you can do is take one of your numerous threads that I seem to have amassed here um, I'm just I'm going to do this with brown I think because I think Henry's a brown cotton cap today um, and while you've got your button and your cardigan lined up, just hold it gently and pop your needle in and then bring your cotton through the buttonhole, leaving your needle in place. And that will then put you exactly in line with where the button needs to go. So I'm just going to bring it over one rib like so. And this is going to be my starting point. I can hear all hear you shouting at me, but the knot is on the right side of the cardigan. Yes, it is. But as you can see, when we put Henry on like so, now I've rested him exactly on that knot and then brought my cotton up through the first hole. 
he is going to completely hide that so we don't have to worry. Now, literally, all I'm doing is putting my needle down through the next hole and just making sure I've got no bubbles in my cotton as I'm doing it. And then from underneath, I'm going to go in like so. Just make sure my hands don't cover for you. And I'm going to bring, I'm going to feel around for the hole, which I can't find at the moment because I've turned Henry round. Oh dear, he was upside down. So tighten that up. And then I'm going to go in and there we go. I've found the next hole. So what I'm going to do is come up through that and then go back down through again. And you can see I'm coming out the other side. And then I'm going to go back through the other hole at the front. And I'm going to do this over and over, probably because I'm using four strands of um, thick cotton. I will only need to do that this last time and then come up through. And then now this is the important bit. To finish off, what we're going to do is just go through the loops that we have stitched on the inside of the cardigan, like so. Bring our needle through and then before the loops get completely pulled tight, I normally put my thumb there. <laughs> And that just stops me getting a bit carried away. Pop your needle through those loops and then gently pull and that gives you a finishing knot which won't come undone. And then of course our trusty snips which you all know very well now. Snip it close. And here we have a really nice focal button that will change the whole look of the cardigan um, and we'll just ease it through because obviously it's slightly bigger. The buttonhole will give in time with gentle easing. How cool does that look? And I must stress, no cats were harmed in the making of this. So Henry is now sat there quite nicely looking a real cool cat. So now obviously this other button hadn't gone missing. So now you can see if I bring it up, you've got your focal button at the top and then your normal buttons further on. Now the other button that we lost is down here and again the same process to line your button up correctly this one you can actually see there is a little bit of um, fluff and such like which indicates where the button was but if there isn't again you've got that button done up S smooth your cardigan band down and that then gives you the place to start. So this one we are going to put what what I called a shank button on um, which is a slightly different process so I think it's really good to show you this one as well. So I am just sorting my threads out at the bottom just to make sure they're all even because 
that will make a difference when you're trying to pull your cotton through. If, if the cotton's not even at the bottom, like so, it won't be even at the top when you're pulling your cotton through and it, it will give you um, little bubbles in your cotton. So with this one, I'm actually going to go from the inside because we don't want our knot to show. And with um, the shank buttons, there's every opportunity that it will because obviously that's the only bit there that you're sewing. So we'll start from the inside, just there, and I'm going to pull my cotton through. And I'm actually going to do just a couple of securing stitches because I just like to do that. Right, so completely different scenario with sewing a shank on. God, it sounds like something dangerous, doesn't it? It's not, I promise. So lay your button so that you can actually see the shank area there. So then you're going to go through the shank from the top like so, and then that way. So you're not actually going in and out like we were with the um, two hole button. And again, in through the shank like so, let it go and then just grab a little bit of cardigan and pull it on because it's quite important that that can swivel around um, otherwise if it's if it's too tight and it can't move what will happen is it will pull the wool of the cardigan whereas when it's moving like that all it's doing is pulling on the cotton and that's more important, really. And obviously, with doing these types of buttons, you would use a colour coordinated thread. I'm using this because it's slightly easier for you to see the process. So again, in and out. And make sure your cotton is even when you pull it through, otherwise you get that sort of thing. And it is a nightmare to sort out, believe you me, as you'll probably be able to see now. All best laid plans and that. So, and then that is nice and secure, but then we do the same process to finish the button off. We go through the back, and then through what we've stitched, like so. And then loop through. There we go. And snip. Now this is the leather one, and again, it's just like a toggle really, but it's just so cool. And you know, they just take, when you put slightly bigger buttons than you're used to, they just take a little bit of, you don't have to pull and tear at it, just ease it gently through. And again, that gives a whole new look to your cardigan. So now I'm going to show you a button with a four hole. Um, so I think what we'll do, we'll take our leather one off again because obviously um, that's not going to stay on there. Now this you will have to be extremely careful with because the last thing you want to do 
is snip the wool of your cardigan because then we'll be going back to our darning tutorial. Um, so just gently ease your fibres out, which you can do, just takes a little time. And this, you know, just very gently, very easy and ease them out. Now I'm using snips, but I would recommend um, a little stitch ripper for this, which you can get from any haberdashery store. But then again, you know, this is to show you. So you wouldn't really want to take a button out once you'd stitched it on. So this is the button that comes, that actually came off. So I'm going to stitch this back on. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I have enough in my needle. Yes. Um, so for the process of this one, I'm going to do it with just two threads. because I think it would be a little bit too thick on a standard needle with the thicker cotton. Um, so here we go, I've taken out one set of thread. So I'm now going to stitch this one back on, um, which is the same as this button. Now this is a four hole, so it is exactly the same principle as your two hole button. So what you will do, you'll lay your button on and then come up through one button. And it's always good to, if you're sewing back a button back on um, it's always good to follow the way the buttons have been the other buttons have been sewn on so these have been sewn on vertically so I wouldn't then want to go and start sewing horizontally because it will look different so in like so now when you're feeling underneath, you need to feel for your next hole and you're coming along now. I've gone through the same holes so you can see how easy it is for things like that to happen. So generally what I tend to do is I tend to look to the front and put my needle in from the back. And for some reason that just works for me. So, um, and here we go, I've hooked it around the other button. So there we go. So then we will come back over now to the other side, go in from the bottom, down through the top, and then we're going to go in from that side, like so. And keep doing that until you feel happy that that button is on securely. So to me, that's nice and secure. Um, so then what we're going to do is tie off at the back. There's my loop. Snip it. And there we have one 
restitched button. As you will know, I like my little hints and tips. So um, when you purchase a new garment with um, buttons, a great idea is just to grab a little bit of clear nail polish. And if you just dab a tiny, tiny little bit over each piece of stitching on your button, that will stop any of the threads becoming unraveled and it will just it won't be a permanent fix but it will keep them on there for a lot lot longer if they were going to uh, come unraveled and then our lovely little wooden buttons i'm going to show you i'm not going to stitch them on but i'm going to show you how a set will just absolutely brighten up and make a garment into almost a totally different look. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope that it's been useful for you. Once again, I must thank On Loan um, because um, it was very kind of them to let us use this cardigan for the tutorial. And also, don't forget, any time there's something that I haven't shown yet that you would like to see, please, please contact me and we can do a tutorial on that for you. So, once again, thank you for listening and um, we'll touch base again next week. Bye-bye.